Our grid down readout system is providing us with all the energy that our family needs. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to install one of these systems? Well, come with us today and we'll show you all the process we went through to get there. Hey, Provider Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen, and today we are thrilled to introduce you to our new grid down readout system. It's kind of interesting because when we were investigating this, we, I had to look up the word readout. Yeah, I didn't know what me it too. meant. And yet it is a term that stands for safe and secure, a place of retreat or a stronghold. That is exactly what we are trying to design our home to be. And so now we have the ability to produce our own power, to store it in these batteries and to be able to do whatever we want that needs electricity. And it's EMP protected. And that's, that was a big part of this was making sure that we can survive whatever is coming in our future. So today we are going to introduce you to the installation process because it was quite a process. It can't just happen overnight. And, and the first part of the process was a consultation between us and griddown.com about the size of system. Cause you can go with a small system, 13 and a half kilowatt, up to 54 kilowatt hours of storage. And so the first part of the process is deciding, okay, do we want a big system, a small system? What size fits our need? And then you build around that. And then there was the design process where we actually had a site inspection. We looked at the roof, we measured everything and decided like for instance, in our garage where we were going to put it. And we decided this back corner was ideal. And originally I'd planned to put it somewhere else, but there were concerns with that. And so I said, well, we'll put it right at the front of the garage. And they said, no can do because if a car runs into that, then we've got problems. And so they're thinking through all these yeah. kinds of details. Yeah. Where we ended up is really the absolute best place for it from every aspect. And part of it too, is when our garage door goes up, we don't really want the whole world seeing this battery system. Yes, they're gonna see the solar panels. We can't do anything about that, but it's kind of tucked away here where nobody else can see it. So we really like that. And then the second thing that we had to do was after the design process was get the approval from our local city. And that took quite a bit of time for us. Yeah, it, it does. It takes a little bit of time and uh, has to go through the planning and zoning process and then through the city council. And then we had to actually order and take delivery on the solar panels and the different parts. So all of that obviously got shipped right to us and it sat in our garage for a few days, but not very long before they came out and got busy getting it all put where it belongs and uh, making the system work. And the actual installation process usually would take about a week, but for us, it took a few weeks because Jonathan, being an engineer, wanted options. Normally you would just have these on the roof. I wanted a pole mount. Just the engineer in me wanted that ability to aim, not only aim the panels where I want them to maximize solar gain, but also to be able to clean them off if the need arises. Now, the reason why the pole mount cost us so much extra time, because for starters, it's right in the middle of a four by four garden bed, which is my garden bed and my space. <laughs> and, me, and he wanted to confiscate it and put concrete you can't grow things in concrete, just in case you're wondering. And then it would have also shaded quite a bit of the surrounding area for my garden. And so the negotiation between us just took a little while. And then he had to dig a hole that was five foot, nine inches deep and four by four, Yeah, which is a really big hole. And you don't realize the size of that hole until you see him in it. Well, and normally I would just bring somebody in with a little track hoe and they'd Not have it garden. done in 30 minutes it would be done but uh, but uh, there was really no way to get a piece of equipment even if she would have allowed it in the garden <laughs> there was no way to get it in there to to actually do that so it had to be done by hand our our neighbor kid likes to earn some money so we had him do about half of it he's awesome he's got all kinds of muscles yeah and then i had to do the other half which was the bottom half which was challenging at That's best challenging but it was something that was important, so we got it done. And we did have a friend come in at the last minute and help us with some of the very last bit to get it done in time. So that was a challenge. We also had to 
clean out this side of the garage and everything, all the shelves and what was stored on it. And so that was a little bit of a pain. And then- But it was good because it was it's good. part of our process of, of cleaning up, cleaning out. And so, some stuff went to the trash and some stuff went to the local charity and it was good. First thing that they did when they came out was in that nice hole, they filled it with rebar and they ran conduit and wire in there and put the pole up and then poured the concrete. Got the concrete, 10,000 pounds of concrete. That pole's not going anywhere. It was over-designed, but that's what engineers do is sometimes over-designed because you want to make sure that you're not going to have a problem somewhere down the road. So then there was a team that came out and actually installed the solar panels on the roof and then they installed the panels. There were eight panels that were on the pole mount. Yes. So those got installed. And then... So work started on the inside, which included plywood on the walls. Plywood on the walls, which I painted so that it would look decent. And it's so funny because every time I thought I had enough paint, then they did something else in another spot that had to have more paint. I know none of you care about the paint, but I cared about the paint. She did. She was passionate about her paint, so. And these guys were very, very patient. I just have to say that, that they, they really, they did a good job and they were super patient with me. Then the batteries, after they got the plywood on, the batteries and the inverters got installed and then started running all the wiring. And it was a little bit of a complicated project. Fortunately, we had a great team of very qualified electricians. They really knew their stuff. So it gave me a high level of confidence that this was all going to happen the right way, according to code, and that we weren't going to have any problems down the road. They actually installed, was it four more meter boxes? Well, three more. We have the original meter box. We have another one outside, and then we have two inside here, yeah. right over there. All to accommodate right. these changes and the ability for this system be, to be totally flexible. We can, if we have to, we can go back to grid or, or we can be on battery. All of this was built into the design so that we have every option available to us. It's a good design. And then finally, the last thing that they did was to install the EMP shield. So inside these boxes, I think there's eight of them, of the EMP shields. Seven, How many? seven EMP shields. Plus the original one we so had. You, got, you had four... Uh, DC EMP shields for the solar panels. All the solar strings, they're all protected. And then three for the remainder of the system, plus the one that we already had outside. So yeah, actually we do have eight yeah. EMP shields protecting the whole system, both the AC and the DC sides. Which gives me a really high level of confidence. These guys knew what they were doing and they created something really wonderful for us. And so after that was all done, we once again had to wait for the city to come out and inspect it. He was really nice, looked around and said, check, check. Yep, he was impressed. Uh, the biggest concern that he had was for grounding. And so, like I said, they'd done everything extremely well. So he didn't really have any problems. Double checked the grounding and, and we were good to go. He signed off and uh, the system got approved to that point. And then we had to wait for our local power company to come out and install the net meter. And one of the frustrating things for me about that piece of it was that it took them a really long time. And while we could initially charge our batteries, we couldn't use our power because the meter only runs one way. So that means that we would have to pay our local power company for not only what we use, but everything we produce. That yeah. didn't sound like a fair deal to us. So it stayed on the grid side of the system until they got that done. And then the joyous day of flipping, the switch. flipping that handle down ah. and being running off our own power and generating our own electricity and our own security. And it's interesting because I thought I would notice some kind of a difference, but I don't notice anything on the user end of it. I just notice that I always have power. So now I have a very happy husband, dream fulfilled. Yeah. But now you wanna know what he does with all of his extra time, his spare time, what do you think he's doing? <laughs> well, not all, but you know, a few minutes every day watching those graphs, or it, it just is exciting for an engineer to see what's happening and you can see when the sun comes up and suddenly the generation curve goes up. Today, it's actually a very cloudy day, so uh, normally we would see eight or nine 
kilowatts of energy coming in. We're seeing about four and a half today, but we're still meeting all of our needs and still putting a little bit in storage. And we're still able to run everything, all of our appliances, including the freeze dryers, the air conditioner. It's just running super, super well. And we recognize that not everyone can afford to do this. It's taken us a really long time to be able to get the system that we've always dreamed of. But this is a really, really good system. And there's a lot of peace for me knowing that we have this backup. And now those who we love have a readout, a place of security, a stronghold where we can all come here and have our basic needs met. So if this is something that interests you, go to griddown.com and check out the readout system. And if you decide you wanna do something, use the promo code Provident and they'll give you 7% off. Now for the question of the day, what other questions do you have about this grid down readout system and the design and installation process? Let us know. And also think about uh, digging that five and three quarter foot deep <laughs> hole. And thanks for being part of the solution.